audiology is the field of medicine or healthcare that studies hearing and balance disorders. And an audiologist is that professional who tests, diagnoses and treats and rehabilitates individuals with auditory and vestibular conditions. I would say that hearing conservation for performers and musicians is vitally important. It gives them longevity of their career. If you think of workers in a noisy environment, noise is a byproduct of that industrial activity, whereas for musicians, music is the desired product and therefore it's very difficult to remove themselves from that, that possibly hazardous uh, risk. So performers who have been exposed to potentially hazardous levels of sound can experience in the initial stages a reduced ability to hear clearly when there's background noise. So maybe they're in a, a restaurant or a pub and they find it difficult to carry on a conversation or listen to those friends and families who are speaking to them. They may also experience those other auditory conditions such as tinnitus, hyperacusis, the reduced tolerance to normally loud sounds. And these will all be present or could possibly be present before any measurable hearing loss is evident with the standard hearing test. The treatments available for people who are experiencing hearing loss of various degrees will depend firstly on the assessment we need to ensure why they're experiencing those symptoms. With hearing loss caused by exposure to loud sound, we cannot at this stage bring back any hearing. That damage, that injury is permanent and cannot be reversed. So the only thing we can do is aid or assist that hearing um, with some form of instrumentation or technology. But with those people with only mild hearing loss and tinnitus, we would advise them to look at various treatments that are available and that range depending on the precipitating factors uh, and the individuals and their lifestyle. It may include provision of white noise generators, it would include directive counselling, uh, it could be mindfulness. There are a wide range of treatments available for those individuals. For performers and musicians, I think an annual check on the health of their hearing is vitally important. We're all used to going to the dentist to have our teeth checked and the opticians to have our eyes checked on a six monthly or an annual basis. But I think for our hearing, that's just as important. And as I say, for performers who rely on their hearing for the longevity of their performing career, then an annual check would be a great idea. Because noise-induced hearing damage is irreversible, although 100% avoidable, preventative measures are vitally important. So we need to ensure that risks are assessed and wherever possible, that loud sound is reduced to an appropriate extent. But if we cannot reduce exposure to that loud, loud music, then we need to look at protection from that risk. So the suggested figures for hazardous exposure to sound is that if you're exposed to 80 decibels for a period of eight hours, beyond that, then potentially it could be hazardous to your hearing. Uh, and an increase of three decibels will half your safe exposure time. So 80 decibels for eight hours becomes 83 decibels for four hours and so on. So very quickly that, that length of time you can be safely exposed to a certain level of sound reduces. So you have to be very aware of not only the loudness of the sound you're exposed to or the volume, but also that duration. Uh, to give some idea of sound levels, my voice at the moment is probably around 60 to 70 decibels. Someone shouting would be 90 decibels. Very quickly, do you find yourself in that hazardous region where, where sound can cause damage to one's hearing. So for all musicians, it's not only the loud music that they're creating, but it's also those individuals around them. 
are, are presenting that possible potential risk. If they cannot reduce that risk at source and reduce the volume of music, the best way is to either increase the distance between themselves and the source of that, that risk, uh, to wear appropriate hearing protection that will be suitable for the risk they're exposed to. So if, if the risk is, is moderate, then the protection they need to wear may not be the same as someone who's exposed eight hours a day, six days a week. Uh, so that's why you need to seek the advice of a professional who can offer suitable hearing protection for the risk you're exposed to. Hearing for everyone is a vitally important precious sense. And once it's gone, it's gone for good. It cannot be treated, it cannot be brought back. So it's of huge importance that we do everything we can to prevent any unnecessary damage or injury to our auditory health. So I would always advise people to seek preventative measures, proactive preventative measures. Uh, maybe on an annual basis, get your hearing checked appropriately by a clinical audiologist. And when risk is evident, use those control measures to avoid that unnecessary but permanent injury to your health.